Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Kerbal stream again. We're back. It's Friday night. We got some more Kerbals here. I have, by popular demand, uh, changed the audio setting, so there should be a little bit less background noise tonight. Made a few adjustments in the streaming software. And I think we're going to have a good time tonight. So let me know if the audio quality has noticeably improved or if it has not, so that way I can fix it. Also, I have added a follower goal somewhere around here. Uh, apparently that's a thing you can just add. So if anybody sees that, let me know. Because I don't know where it's supposed to be. Anyway, let's jump on into the game, shall we? So we last left off earlier this week. We had just finished a big mission where we had to upgrade an old satellite. And we finished it, so it's time to bring that ship home and grab a new mission, I think. All right, we're definitely not doing the rover. I've talked about this. Although the money looks good. So maybe we can grab some branded Kerbals from the Mun. Let's do that. Grab a couple of Kerbals. All right, what do we got? We have, oh, that's right. Uh, Valentina is heading home with Bob, I believe. And this is the satellite that we fixed. This is some debris that's going to be flying around Herb until the end of time. And these are the new herbals we need to rescue. So let's start. I assume both of these are traveling standard counterclockwise rotation. I guess we'll check in on this. and actually change this thing's name because it's no longer aging. It'll just be... Uh, I'll call this Mun Bat 1. It's a relay. And, oh, I'm using the wrong mouse movement there. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm using it again. I gotta remember, this is a, not the game that uses the middle mouth. All right. Where are we headed today? What is our best bet? Feel like we should start by going toward the Mun. And maybe, I don't know, gathering up some science or something before we head back because we are in a kind of an interesting orbit here we can grab some decent uh, ground stuff uh, can eventually turn off target mode that is one heck of an orbit huh well, I suppose it's good for a relay satellite. That's probably good. It'll only take about an hour. So... Yeah. Oh, we're like on a weird backwards orbit. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get any polar stuff, I don't think. We're not in the right inclination for that. So we'll keep an eye on Valentina's mission heading home, but in the meantime, we gotta get Jeb and Bill back. Actually, now that I think about it, we might have enough to land and return 
I'll need to bust out the, the calculator for that, I think. But if we do, we could get some experience for Bill. We'd want to land, like, right on the equator as best we can, though. And, of course, unfortunately, our Delta V doesn't decrease, so I don't have a good... No idea how much Delta V we're going to have left, so maybe we don't do that. rather not risk it if we can avoid it. We spent a lot of Delta V getting into that inclination. Okay. Bring that in nice and close. Might be able to get the twin craters here. If you're just joining us here, we're just wrapping up the mission from Monday. We had fixed up the satellite, and we got to bring Jeb and Bill back to the Space Center. I also accepted two new Rescue the Kerbal missions. So we got Packin and Dillis. And we're going to need to rescue them at some point. We'll put together a new craft that can suit, seat three Kerbals so we can come out here, grab them both, and then head back. Do something with the uh, the big capsule. We'll do like an orbit around the moon. We'll grab what we can, and then we'll head on back. Also, please let me know if the audio has improved at all. I made some adjustments in the software so it picks up less background noise, but I want to make sure that it's actually picking up my voice when it's supposed to. Because the last thing I want is for you guys not to be able to hear me. So in gaming news, I guess we can get started on topic of conversation today. I've been playing a lot more of Dyson Sphere program off stream. It's a good game to get, you know, 20-30 minutes in before work or before bed do a little bit of automation and then be done with it kind of like that now let's see what we can get here pretty sure we've already got yeah not really worth grabbing anything let Bill hop out and tell us how it looks I won't go on a rant about Skyrim again this stream, probably. Although, speaking of uh, Elder Scrolls, does anybody remember Oblivion? It was, you know, the game before Skyrim that everybody forgot because Skyrim's been out for 10 years now. And uh, I guess the closest thing we've had so far to another Elder Scrolls game was Elder Scrolls Online, which, well, you know, it's online, so... Either play it or you don't. Doesn't quite have the same appeal, I don't think. Yeah, I think we're just gonna have to accept that this is gonna be a weird orbit. Alright, so if I remember correctly, we're gonna need to boost when we're going this way about. See, I don't think we're going to be able to pick up. Oh, maybe this this crater down here we can grab real quick. And thank you, Emmykins, for pointing out that the audio sounds good. I hope that I can... I don't know. There's not usually a lot of ambient noise around here, but... In case there was, I wanted to kind of drown it out. As charming as it might be for you guys to hear me 
chattering away on the keyboard, I think. That might seem a little unprofessional from a streaming standpoint. Ah, the Southwest Crater. That's a new one. And I think... Oh, nope. Gotta be inside the ship for that. Yeah, we don't get anything extra. Uh, pretty sure we've already got this crater. So let's just... Make like a tree and get out of here. Oh, well that was easy. I guess really... Gotta burn a lot of Delta V if we wanna do that. Pretty dang good. Look at that. That is not terrible. Perfect. So we are here. We are listening to the sounds of space. Floating in a tin can, high above the mun. And we're gonna send Jeb home. So we can come back later. Oh, that's why they resent Bill because we needed an engineer, right? I was like, why do we have Bill here? But it makes sense. We needed him to do some uh, engineering work. Which I'm glad they added, by the way. Like, engineers were useless practically for the longest time. And having them have the ability to make basically constructions on the fly in space or on another planet is huge. And adds a lot of uh, utility. Alright, here comes the periapsis. Just gotta get that into the lower atmosphere. Right around 15 is good. And we are off to the races. Go ahead and add that. Light changes. And also we should check we have high above the moon here. I think this is still low. Better, but check to see if we have it. We have goo. We got the goo too. We got the goo. Uh yeah. That's whatever. Alright, here we go. That debris is gonna bother me forever until I take care of it. Because it's going into the atmosphere, but the game doesn't simulate it unless you're actually flying it. Science Junior buddy here. Yeah. Not getting much out of it. We'll get what we can. Take a couple of mitts. Bill can hop out and grab those. So how was everybody's week? You guys have a fun free Thanksgiving week for those of us in America. It's uh next week is Thanksgiving. I think Canadians already had theirs and other countries don't know what the heck a Thanksgiving is, so if you've got a fun holiday in your country, let me know. And now we want to cross the threshold here, set up a second alarm around periapsis. Emikin says, my week was good. Well, that's great to hear, Emikin. I'm glad you had a good week. I think if everybody had a good week, more people would be happier or something. All right. So we will warp. And then we'll put together a nice rescue ship. And then I'm gonna ride this thing down. My cat's birthday is today, so that's cool. That is cool. How old is your cat? here, ready to go. We're going to be coming in. Mm, 
whoa, pretty close to the KSC, it looks like. And we'll be avoiding the uh, mountain, so that's good. What do you guys think of this lander? I like the fuel pods, but... I wonder if a smaller engine would be better. Like, this is a solid engine, and it's got good ISP, but I don't know. And there go the fuel pods. And here goes the other part. And butt down, and let's land. Hopefully we don't get smacked by one of our other parts, but I think we should be okay. Keep an eye there, one there, uh-oh, getting a little close. Alright, everything's exploding around us on re-entry. Always a fun time watching everything burn up and explode in spectacular ways. Alright, I think we're safe from our debris. Oh, we're not going to be that close to the KSC at all. We're going to come in over the desert. Hmm. Shield's getting a little toasty. Probably fine. So, oh right, I was talking about Oblivion. What the heck? How, how silly of me. Um, I guess the question was, do you remember Oblivion, first of all? And I remember Oblivion. It was the first Elder Scrolls game that I played. Um, I did briefly see Morrowind on an Xbox. And that was after I had played Oblivion already, I think. So I was kind of into Oblivion. But man, the game was cool. Good time. Uh, and I know there's some there's some issues with like the the enemy scaling and all that stuff. And I think that stuff a lot of that is present in Skyrim as well. There's a uh, Minmus up there. But it's just impressive how they managed to create these big open worlds and it's such a shame that they're bogged down with all the the bugs and glitches and stuff and bad pathing and just general npc badness i would love to see a more i don't know competent i don't want to say competent like clearly they're competent they they made the game but i don't know somebody who's willing to really like get their hands dirty and, and fix all the bugs. Like the modders do it, it can't be that much of a hassle, right? But I would love to see that level of detail brought with the polish that it deserves, you know? Like a, a good, a decent story, like the main quest nobody cares, but like, just get drop. You get dropped into this sandbox world. Maybe there is no main quest at all. It's just you're dropped into this fantasy sandbox, and things are going on, and you can interact with them. And maybe, and this will, you know, a lot of people won't be into this idea, but maybe things are happening in the background as you're playing, and if you don't interact with them, they resolve themselves in a different way than if you had. Like, at, at time passing actually means something in this game. And I think Outer Wilds proved that you can do something like that. You can have time pass, and you can have things change. Obviously, there's the loop in that, so it sort of absolves you of having to restart the game over and over to get the results you want, but... I think the issue, one of the issues, aside from the bugs, obviously, 
take this one, is that things don't really change unless you interact directly with them. Like, the Civil War only gets resolved. It's like Schrodinger's quest, right? Like, it doesn't matter unless you look, you observe it. It's, it's a quantum quest. Uh, Alright, so we have a mission. Let's put something together to go rescue those Kerbals. So I think we want to start with the Conquistador shell. And let's just... Eh. Yeah, we'll call this B. What do we have now? The Savior 3. But yeah, that's what I'd like to see in a, in a game. Something where your contributions matter and they'll change the story in a tangible way, but at the same time, the story's not waiting around for you to show up. It's happening in the background, and depending on how you choose to play through it, that'll change what happens in the story, which, you know, that's how the story should work from a video game perspective, obviously. So this is three. I guess we'll slap a couple of solar panels on here. Give us a little bit of extra power. Yeah, that that probably makes sense. Um, and then we how much Delta V do we have once we get off the ground? Probably enough. And that's true. We never upgraded the. The launch pad, so we're kind of stuck with what we got, right? If we can stick an extra fuel bit in there, Let's see if that's still got enough. Yeah, that's fine. This has gimbling, right? It does. Uh, yeah, that's it's about as good as I could hope for, I think. Right, we finished the Monday. Oh, that's right. We were doing a contract while we were up there. Yeah. So let's get this loaded up with Jeb. The only person I trust to fly these experimental crafts. Valentina. Different game. Oh. Interesting. Probably check. Auto propellant, don't care. Yeah. We need to fix there. All right, let's launch it. So that's my theory on Bethesda games. I'm sure, you've heard it before. You've heard it all before, or maybe you're a huge fan and you don't care one way or the other. But I think that in the right, capable hands, they could really build something that feels immersive. I know people say Skyrim feels immersive already, but I think there's still there's still more work to be done in that front. I'm not quite willing to just go ahead and, and give Skyrim a free pass on the immersiveness front. I said I wasn't going to rant about Skyrim. It's not really about Skyrim, though. It's about those kind of games in general, and I just, the fact that nobody else really seems to pull it off. Like, I know people praise The Witcher 3, but that's more of a linear game overall. Like, you're playing as a set character, and there's a set storyline, and there are side quests, yes, and there are decisions, yes, but ultimately, it's a singular, it's a singular experience. And you might enjoy playing through it multiple times, but it's not going to change substantially, I don't think. Whereas something like Breath of the Wild, which also has a pretty linear set story, but it's more sandboxy in that you can kind of approach what you find most interesting, and it all kind of builds to a, to a finale. But that also has the same problem that the world is static. And except for the, the enemy scaling. Another topic, again, I don't particularly care for. 
I like the way Fallout New Vegas handles it more, where the enemies are more kind of constrained to areas by level. Like, everybody memes about the Cazadors and the Death Claws if you go the wrong way to try to get to Vegas, but I think that's interesting. It kind of it lets people who are skilled enough or maybe crafty enough take on enemies that are higher level than them, but also kind of leaves a, a path of least resistance open to someone who maybe isn't as confident or doesn't know the game as well. And I'm not going to sit here and like praise Fallout New Vegas that much because that also has a lot of issues, glitches, and stuff. So it kind of falls into that not quite the same trap, but similar trap as uh, the Elder Scrolls games do. And it bumps me out, because like I said, there's so much potential. And you know the modders get their hands on these games, and they, they clean them up, and they dust them off, and dip a new coat of paint, and they say, hey, here you go, remember that game you, you liked? Well, here it is again, but better. Whereas, you know, the publisher will wash their hands of it and say, well, we released it, here you go. Of course, then you have the exceptions like Minecraft that get updated for years and years and years. And even now, people complain that the updates aren't coming out fast enough or not on time or whatever. I'm like, well, I mean, come on, man. The game has been out for 10 years now. What more do you want? Getting free updates. Anyway, I'm talking to myself. Anybody else have a nice topic of conversation they want to bring up? Should I just sit here in silence while I play Kerbals for a bit? Either one's fine. I like talking about games. I like playing games. What do you guys think of that launch? Is that a decent launch, you think? We have enough Delta V to get us circularized and then we can that Jeb off on his adventure here. Oh yeah, that's plenty. That's good. That's good stuff right there. Let's launch here. Get our orbit nice and circular. And then we head for the mun. Also, if anybody is talking in chat, uh, I haven't seen it, so don't feel like I'm missing your chat in case my uh, chat has frozen. Possibility. All right. So, set up our MUN launch here. It's going to be somewhere around there. Give it the old... 860 and tweak from there. Oh, it's not quite what we want, is it? Ideally, not crash into the one. Okay, that's what we want. Alright. Check some stuff here. Okay. Uh, what do you mean, ignore? I haven't ignored you at all. You haven't said anything except my cat's birthday is today. To which I replied, that's great. How old's your cat? There we go. If anything, you were ignoring me because you didn't respond. All right, let's uh, speed up time a little bit here. I think we're gonna go ahead and bring this guy home because he's gonna fly around and it's gonna bug me. 
then I don't just want to... Oop, I should probably actually start boosting. He's going to be 11. Wow. What a good boy. I hope he had a good birthday today. Hope he got some great presents. We have uh, Pack in here, Dillis. We're gonna get them scooped up and sent home and ready to go out on some missions of their own. Some more scientists would be nice, actually. Uh, scientists. 132 science we have right now. That should be decent chunk. Oh, okay, overshot our target a little bit, that's all right. Just back that off a little bit. Let's turn that down to 10. He did, he did get some good presents or enjoy his birthday or both. So these guys are at 11,000. Wow, they're cutting a little close, huh? There we go. So we will pop that back up. Turn off the targeting at an alerta. And we're going to switch over to the debris. And we'll write her down and we'll talk about something fun. <sighs> There's still fuel in here. There's still fuel in here. Hmm. I wonder if it's worth putting probe cores on these things and maybe trying to bring them back in the future. Probably not. I think we're spending quite enough money on launches to justify that. And it's like a lot of extra busy work that gets added. Bring it on into the atmosphere here. Emmykins, what games have you been playing recently? We can talk about those. Playing Animal Crossing, right? That's a pretty popular game with the uh, the new update that came out. A lot of big streamers have been playing it again. I really should start to uh, think about getting a streaming on my Wii, or not my Wii, my Switch. See if uh, I can spice it up a little bit with some other games. I have to actually get some games, though. I, uh, I don't think I've touched the Switch in months, actually. I think I'm just generally I've accepted my lot in life as a as a PC gamer at this point. I know there's a lot of fun exclusives and stuff, but you know, none of it's really jumps out at me. Most of the stuff that I want is either going to be on PC or uh nothing, I guess. Because there's all the old stuff, like the old N64 stuff I might want to play. But most of the stuff that I played on PlayStation is getting either... I don't want to play anymore because it's, you know, old and I've beat it and there's no real reason to go back to it. Or it's already been re-released on Steam, so... It's not a whole lot of incentive for me to get into consoles. Punchy is the best villager. Okay. We got a Punchy stand. I don't know, what about Anka? Seen a lot of seen a lot of buzz on the internet about Anka. And also the other one who everybody really wanted that was super rare. People were charging money 
come visit their island that I don't remember the name of because I don't know their names. Isn't there like a panda villager? I don't I don't quite understand how that game works. I guess you just you recruit people to come work on your island. Like a, some kind of plantation owner or something. Where to go? And we might actually be able to recover this. No guarantee, but Chester. Chester A hey, Pangolin. Pangolin has raided me with a party of two. Ooh, party of two. That was my favorite TV show back in the 90s. It's a bit of a slow night tonight. I'm not seeing any of the usuals in yet, so... Thanks for stopping by. We're just watching a piece of debris fall slowly towards Kerbin. Very, very slowly. Also, I hope you were enjoying that trash game you've been playing. It uh, looks interesting. A little too ARPG for my taste, but hopefully it's working for you. If you like that kind of stuff, I might have some other recommendations. Hello, hello, she says. She makes herself known in chat. Also, please let me know if the audio quality has improved. I made some adjustments in the streaming software, and now shouldn't be picking up any of the obnoxious background noise that it may have previously. I also boosted it a little bit, so I'm a little, I might be a little louder for those of you with, uh, I don't know, hearing impairedness, or just the fact that I generally don't Make myself loud? It's kind of like Dark Souls in that you can get seriously destroyed by random encounters. I mean, that's just any ARPG, really. I sound fine. Well, thank you. You sound fine yourself. Except when you're swearing up a storm. Ah, here we go. Finally re-entering the, the thicker part of the atmosphere here. I think you'll find that despite my military experience, I don't swear that much. Unless I'm, I don't know, around friends at a gaming table. And then maybe. But I consider myself pretty mild-mannered. Well, we're going to get a good view of the KSC from up here. Look at that. We had some parachutes on this thing. We might be able to land it. Or how much money this would cost, or how much we'd get back if we recovered it. I curse when I game, I'm not going to try to hide it, that's fair. Yeah, you should definitely play Spelunky then. I'm sure you'll be inventing swear words by the end of the night at that point. And it's a 2D platformer, so you can't complain that it's not your style of game. Is this thing going to act... E yes, it is. Okay, good. Like, if I have to sit through another orbit of this crap, add it to the list. It's on the list. How long is this list at this point? Ah, look at that beautiful plasma. I hope in KSP2 there's a little more interactivity with the re-entry. Because as it stands, parts coming in are either good or destroyed. Death Trash doesn't mess around with encounters, though. It's not like most stuff I play where things are challenging but doable. Sometimes you can get swarmed by multiple things way stronger than you. 
interesting. So it's not like Diablo 2 is what you're telling me. That's weird. The atmospheric sounds don't change. Rolling in or out. My list of games is decently seized. It's not like the movie or book list that are long. Yeah, I had to cut movies and books out of my life so I could spend more time playing video games. That's why I still haven't seen The Eternals yet, despite my mild intrigue at seeing it. Not like Diablo, no, okay. Oh, I guess it's more, uh, kind of like Hades then? You should, you should play Hades, too, if you like um, that style of game. I think that's a good uh, entry-level roguelite you might enjoy. Plus, it has like a fun story, if you care about that kind of stuff. That's probably already on the list, though, so... What's the, uh, what's the next game on the list that I can expect to see? I can't imagine you've got too much left in Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Hades is on the list. It is. It as the first in the sty style that looked really exciting. Yeah, uh, those guys make good games. It's like the people who made Bastion and stuff, right? Super Giant, or yeah, that's right, Super Giant. Oh, it's starting to get hot. Get a little toasty. I also find it interesting that engines, which are designed to, like, expel heat, can absorb so much heat. I guess it's just a quirk of the, the thermal system in the game. So we've got Jebediah heading out to rescue two Kerbals, and Valentina and Bob are still on the way back from Minmus. I'll be playing Death Trash for Friday until that's played out. Then not sure. Hades is by the same people that did Bastion. Yeah, Super Giant. I couldn't get into Bastion. Like, I know people kind of like, oh, this is like the best game I ever played. I can't believe. Uh, how good it is, but when I played it, I'm like, this is this is the game, this is it, where's the gameplay? And maybe they were talking more, like, storyline-wise, but I just couldn't really, I don't know, find the fun. So, when you say Freeform Friday, that's when you play, like, whatever, right? So what do you do the rest of the week? You have like uh like genre days or platformers the next one will be 2d platformer game toy factory and limbo limbo okay limbo i'm familiar with well yep that just died let's head to the tracking station and pick up where jeb left off the savior three limbo shouldn't take you too long i think that's like a shorter game so Guess we'll see how things go as far as uh, timing. I think one of my issues with platformers that aren't Metroidvanias is that they're often really short. Like, uh, I don't remember what it was called, but I beat, that's the actual name, 2D platformer game Toy Factory. Okay, it's very short, I'll do that, and then Limbo, okay. But yeah, uh, I don't remember the name of the game but I played it, like I got it on sale, and I'm like, okay, this looks cool, I'll give it a shot. And then I beat it in like four hours, and I'm like, oh, that's cool, I guess. But then I go over to my, um, like my Steam list, and I look at my playtime, and I'm like, you know, 100 hours, 200 hours, 500 hours, 1,000 hours. 
and I just it's hard for me to justify even getting even getting um like on sale games that are that short because I know usually the stories just don't really hook me I like I don't feel like I'm engaged with whatever it is the the game is trying to tell me and maybe a, a lot of that's on me obviously but I don't know I just when I get a game I want to I want to really sink my teeth into it and and experience everything it has to offer and platformers just don't usually hook me in that way Like I've seen you been, I, I see you've been playing the Ori games, and those seem decently long. And I think they're more like Metroidvanias in that regard. That there's a lot of paths and things to unlock and secrets and stuff. Limbo is fun for you, okay? I haven't played Limbo, so I can't speak for that directly. But just my experience with 2D platformers is they're kind of like starter games almost. All right, so we're coming up on our periapsis here. We'll need to circularize, and I guess we will set Dillis here as our first victim. Here we go. Go ahead and head to our intersect point here. Uh, oh, yes, Emmy Kins. That did, in fact, say hi to you. Have you played Hollow Knight? I have not played Hollow Knight. Um, it looks too hard for me. Oh. Score Gaming, by the way. Follow. Thank you. Yo, sup. Not much. Sup with you. Doing a little Kerbals tonight. I hope you're here because you like Kerbal Space Program, or because you heard that I'm awesome. Either one is fine. Not much. Hope you're enjoying your Friday, checking out the good stuff. In case you're wondering what we're doing here, uh, this is Kerbal Space Program. Hard mode, I've got the difficulty set to hard, and I'm not playing with any mod, so uh, that's basically the whole thing. And right now, we have two herbals we need to rescue for missions. It's not my fault, I promise. Uh, so we've got Jebediah here with the with the three-seater. He's going to pick these two up. You play with few visuals. That's what I... That seems to be the gist I've, I've heard from most people, is that they really like the visual stuff. Like uh, Scatterer and all that, all that cool stuff. So we need to wrap this around a little bit. See how many loops we can do. Probably one more after this. That should be good. I'm not going to get greedy. You're impressed Jeb is still alive, huh? How old is he now? Uh, I mean... I've only been playing for like let's see where's the time it's year one day 62 so I don't know he's at least one year and 62 days old I'll have to check the KSP wiki to get canon ages on all the Kerbals let's turn that down a little bit can't really scooch it in there yeah that's good that's the good stuff. We will... We'll probably keep the thrust limiter around 10. I don't want to go too crazy. And we're going to... Go ahead and speed up time here. Now that we've got our... Ordinance locked in. And we have to keep in mind Valentina is still... On her way back, so we'll need to keep an eye on that. So not too old. I don't know if time passes real world or not. So it is real world, but there are time controls to speed it up. 
So a day on Kerbin is six hours in our hours. Um, so the game is in real time, but I speed it up. It takes about six hours to get to the Mun, so like one day. And then it can take a f like a couple of months. That's probably not right to get out to like some of the farther planets. I don't know the exact times, but I've usually not played past year three, having made it to Duna and Eve, which are two of the two of the closer planets you can get to. All right, we probably could have done another loop, but that's okay. Better, better safe than sorry, right? So we're coming in here. So Score Gaming, if you're here and you're here to watch KSP, uh, what's your favorite planet? Or Moon, I guess. I, I shouldn't keep it so, uh, so narrow. Mun! You like the Mun? All right. That's fair. The Mun is great. As far as ease of getting to, it's certainly up there with Minmus. Uh, I find Minmus a little bit easier to deal with just because of the, the low gravity, but the Mun is definitely something you can handle. I really like going to Duna. All right, have fun lurking. You've only been to the Mun? Okay, well. Stick around and maybe you'll see me uh, do something a little more spicy than, than that. My goal for this playthrough is to get to every planet at least once. No, uh, no guarantee of returning though, so. Sorry, new Kerbal colonist on Eve. You're, you get to live there now. We will close up the gap a little bit. Yep. I've been to Eve with a probe. Not in this playthrough, but this is a fresh playthrough. It's relatively early in the game. Uh, I've made it to Eve with a probe, and I've made it to Duna and back with a... with the ship. With a Kerbal on it, so... My goal uh, for this playthrough, like I said, is to get to every planet at least once. I really want to visit the jewel system. I've never actually gone there in the game. I always like get ready to go and have a ship ready and then for one reason or another I just stop playing on that save so now that the game is fully out and I don't have to worry about any more updates or anything breaking I'm here to play and I'm ready. Now we should probably do this. So uh You've made it to the Mun, and you've made it back, I hope, without having to send a rescue mission. Nope. Oh, okay, so you've made it to the Mun, but not back. All right, well. Do you know how to do it? I mean, there's a lot of great tutorials on there for getting to the Mun your first time, so... I don't want to, like, assume you don't know what you're doing, but if you don't, I might be doing a Mun mission later tonight, so stick around and maybe check out how to do it. Are you playing on regular career or science career or sandbox or what? Because that, you know, kind of changes. You don't. You don't. Okay, that's fair. This game is, it has a interesting learning curve. We'll say that. Okay, we need to slow down a lot more. Let's uh, crank this bad boy up. Science, you're playing, okay, science is a good place to start, yeah. Um, so when I do MUN missions, I usually focus on getting the smallest, not the smallest, smallest, but the smallest 1.5 meter engine, I think it is the Terrier, and using that for my 
landing vehicle. And I'll show you my landing vehicle after these missions here. But I build kind of weird landers. Um, I'm not sure what makes them different from most people's. I think just the fact that they have weird, like, detachable fuel pods with legs for landing. Right, let's get ah, another engineer. All right, well, not the worst thing we could have. We're going to need some engineers for mining craft anyway. All right, let's go, buddy. Into the craft with you. All right, so there's number one. Uh, can you do rendezvous maneuvers yet? Is that something you've learned? And there's our intersect. So we need to... What? No! Okay. Well, then stay tuned, because we're going to be doing one of those very shortly. In fact, we just did one. So what you want to do is, in this case, Packin's craft is behind us in orbit. So we want to burn prograde to extend our orbit out this way, which will make us go slower relative to Packin's craft. So you'll see. So watch the intersect. As I go out farther with my apoapsis, the position moves closer. And you can see the separation going down as I go farther out. And then eventually, they'll be right on top of each other. And there are ways you can do this. Like, you don't necessarily have to do this all in one orbit. You could split it across multiple orbits to conserve fuel. But in this case, I've got plenty of fuel, so I'm not too worried about it. So we now have our intersect. It's going to be about 500 meters. And then we're just going to speed up time. Okay, okay, all right. You'll be a pro soon enough, don't you worry. How long have you been playing? You just get it recently? A year. Okay, you've been playing for a year. Yeah. So depending on how often you play and how much you really get into it, um, you know, you get out of it what you put into it if you want to play a lot a good idea to watch some tutorials online or or read read tutorials I guess that's a thing too you don't have to watch them um, it's imp one of the important things to know is your Delta V requirements for getting to different places so there's a lot of good Delta V maps out there that'll kind of tell you how much it should cost to get to X place and then in the vehicle assembly building, you can actually see how much Delta V your craft is estimated to have. Which can really help when planning things out. All right, so as you can see, our intersection is approaching. Now at this point, once you have visual contact with the other craft, you want to change to target mode. And since I'm coming in from behind it here, I want to make sure my retrograde marker is on this pink guy here. You're doing a MUN mission, a satellite, a small satellite. Okay. Those are, I find that those are very useful to have, especially if it's got like a thermometer on there, because you can just constantly do missions that require uh, science from around the MUN. But it's also a lot easier to put something in orbit than it is to land in return, so. It's a good uh, practice mission. All right, so we're coming in at, relative to our target, we're coming in at 33 meters per second. So as we get closer, we're gonna wanna slow down until we're almost zero meters per second relative to them. And then we've matched orbits. And then our other guy, Packin, can hop out come jump in the, the shuttle and we can take everybody home.
But yeah, it's super cool that you're getting into it now. I've been playing for almost since it came out, actually. I must have bought it back in, like, 2012. But maybe, maybe not. I don't remember the exact time frame. But I've been playing since they just had the Mun before they added Minmus. I know that for sure. So it's been a it's been a long strange journey for this game and I'm glad to see so many people really enjoying it. And I'll reiterate what I've said in the past. I think it's the Kerbals that make it. Like if this was just a dude down here, it wouldn't have nearly the charm. It wouldn't be nearly as as interesting. Slow it down here. Also, this can be made infinitely easier with mono propellant. So, don't feel like you have to use your rocket engines for this kind of stuff. Alright, so let's hop over to our good friend Packin, who is a Lady Kerbin, and she is a scientist. So, it's just a weird little joy. Yes. So much joy. All right, let's drop on down here. Oh, we're at a weird angle here. Hang on. Do get underneath and grab on. There we go. And board and try not to slam into it. All right, now where are we? Now we need to go home. So first things first, let's get away, get out of the orbit of these things so we don't crash into anything. Yeah, that should be just about good. And that's two Kerbins, I curb it, Kerbals, Kerbin is the planet. Not the people. Two Kerbals on board in addition to Jeb, so that's three total. Got an engineer and a scientist. Pretty good haul, I think. Speed up time. So uh, if you got any questions, feel free to ask him in the chat. I'll do what I can. I'm not, I am not an expert by any means. I've just been playing the game for a long time and picked up some tricks. So if you have a question about anything I'm doing, let me know. I'll try to explain my thought process for most of these things as I go. I don't want anybody to feel alienated, you know. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. I'm gonna add a maneuver. About 300. And, well, just from there. Okay, 300 was apparently way too much. There we go. Right. There looks good. Alright, perfect. What am I doing here? Why is nothing working? What the? Oh, time is sped up. Holy crap. Like, why? <laughs> why is nothing working? Because I had time. Time dilation on. Node in 42 minutes. That's not what I want. There we go. And we've still got two days, two hours, 44 minutes before we have to worry about Valentina. But I think after this mission, we'll get rid of these debris, and then we'll land Valentina, and then we'll decide what we're going to do next. I think we need to do another mission to Minmus, actually. 
I picked up that mission to do flag on Minmus. We still have fly by Eve, but I don't know if we're going to get to that tonight. Hello, Vulcan Rider. Welcome back. Glad to see ya. We're doing more uh, Kerbals tonight. And, and we have a new face in the chat, Score Gaming, by the way. Or uh, maybe just BTW. So am I. Awesome. So yeah, we took a we took a short detour. You oh you know him. All right. That's cool. And let's burn. See how things go. There goes our periapsis. Get it nice and low. I like to do around 15k. That's just me. And now, got our happy little kerbals. Make sure everybody is looking good. Jeb, Phyllis, packing. You guys good? All right, everybody's good. Yeah, we took a we took a short detour to Rimworld on Wednesday. That was kind of fun. Yeah, the, uh, the chat had a good time just sending me random stuff. But we're back with Kerbals. I'm very happy to be here. It's just such a chill game. Uh, unless you're, you know, having issues and then it gets a little stressful, but it's definitely a lot less stressful than some of the games I've played in the past. Emikins will be right back, so that means you can post whatever and there's no moderator. Except for me. I can still do moderation. But maybe don't just post whatever. Oh! Uh, and if you're just joining us, for those of you who weren't here from the beginning, uh, I did make some adjustments to the microphone setting, so it shouldn't be picking up any ambient background noise it should just mostly be getting my voice so let me know if that sounds good so far i've had positive uh reviews on it so and i see score gaming by the way knows the lyrics to this song q positive all right all right we are almost to our change of soi and then we're gonna Head on down with these three, and then we'll check back in on Valentina, who's still heading home from Minmus. And at some point, I'm going to need to put a satellite up, I think. We can start raking in the... Uh, get science data from X missions. I also should put together a space station at some point, now that we have some more scientists to work with. Like we're coming in over the desert. Oh, we have a look at all that Delta V we've got, jeez. I am way over engineering these guys. Probably could have done a W your tank. So how's everybody's week? Everybody have a good time? A little pre-Thanksgiving action. I know the uh, the new Ghostbusters movie is out. Anybody planning to check it out? That's a bit of a nostalgia trip. Happy it's over? I mean, yeah. It's my life. Like... Uh, work, 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 and then take a quick break, and then work, work, work. I guess that's most people's lives. But uh, you know what? I'm lucky because I get to stream three days a week, and that, like, energizes me. Oh, wow, we've got way too much ablator in there. I'm going to have to tweak that. 
my favorite thing about Friday streams is that I can stay up late. Which isn't super useful tonight because I have a... I have another stream I have to go over to to co-host, I guess. So, we'll be going until around 8.45ish, so about another hour and a half here. But, we'll see how much we can get done in that time. Anyway, but, uh, I guess you guys weren't here. I was ranting about Skyrim again. And, uh, kind of talking about how I feel like... A, a competent group of developers with the same kind of budget as Skyrim really needs to do a similar game. You know, without all the bugs and stuff. Because it seems like there's so much untapped potential there and nobody's really going for it except for Bethesda and they've proven that they can't really handle it, I don't think. Also, for those of you who aren't aware, it is my cat's 11th birthday. So, if you want to wish him a happy birthday, he got lots of toys and uh, tuna today. Very happy. He's sleeping it off right now. Uh, but other than that, we haven't really had much to talk about. ahead and pop the parachute now. Probably not worth it. Wait till we're a little bit closer. We'll make some quick tweaks to this rocket and we'll go check up. And Bob. Parachute's away and we will come to a nice Gentle stop on the surface of Urban. Hi, Cap. Yes, very. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here. Are you a KSP lover as well? Did anyone ever jettison their heat shields? Is that worth it? I feel like it's not worth it. Coming in, we're coming in, we're coming in. Going down. Alright, see? Well, we don't even need to jettison it. I guess maybe if you have, like, an engine underneath. You don't have it, but it seems very fun. Well, well let me be the first to tell you. Probably not the first. Uh, it's definitely worth it. It's a great game. Very fun. It's one of those games where... You play and you play and you play, and there's always a way to improve. Plus, there's a ton of mods that people seem to like, so... I can't vouch for any of them personally. Alright, science data from Surface of the Mun. But I know that there's a lot, and a lot of people like them. Alright, so I'm not seeing anything here I want to do right now. Although... Attach new part to satellite in orbit of Kerbin. That's a kind of a low payout for that. Mm. Guess we could do another one of another rescue mission, but how much are we actually getting paid for that? Eighty thousand, eighty-nine thousand. That's not bad. Build an F twenty-two. I don't think I have the parts for it. All right, so Vulcan Rider says, my two favorite modernish games are Cold Waters, which is the uh, Cold War submarine sim we were discussing, and Kerbal. Last night, BBC America had Hunt for Red October and Apollo 13 on back-to-back. -back. Wow. Very cool. Hunt for Red October is such a great movie. I haven't seen Apollo 13, but uh, I imagine it's, it's also pretty good. So if I wanted to build an F-22, what would I have to spend... I'd have to get aviation, aerodynamics, 
supersonic flight and advanced aerodynamics. Probably not high altitude flight necessarily. A lot of science to just build one one jet, I gotta say. Okay. I did unlock the processing lab. So maybe that's something we want to put in orbit to start racking up a little bit of science. How many scientists do we have? P-51? Ah, I don't think it has the parts for that in game. Oh, wrong one. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh. Paying autocorrect. Ah, uh, re. Okay. Just type out what you want. Don't worry. No one's judging. For a P-51. I mean, it, the game doesn't really do prop engines. It's designed with jet engines in mind and rockets. Although I could have swore they added turboshaft engines. I don't know if it actually... Oh, here we go. Propeller blades. Yeah, I could theoretically do one. Helicopter blades and propeller blades. Hmm. I'll think about that if the need arises, or I'll go do it in sandbox mode when I'm not worried about risking my Kerbal's lives in experimental vehicles. Uh, okay, we were going to make an adjustment to the Savior 3, and then we were going to go check on Valentina and Bob. So this doesn't need as much fuel. We determined that much. Guess it would be... This is like the next step down, right? No, that's not even the right size. It's this one. There we go. And I think we can do the same here. And decrease the size. Alright, oh, and the later 80s, the lowest you can go. Since I just lost power going to moon, I put 80 batteries on my small sat. Uh, have you unlocked solar panels yet? Because 80 batteries, that's going to add up. It's a lot of weight. No, okay, well, in that case, yes, you're going to need batteries. But I don't... Uh, make sure you put it in hibernation mode while it's in transit. Otherwise, it's going to eat through 80 batteries worth probably as well. You did? Okay, and it still ate through the batteries? Yeah, batteries probably aren't going to get you there then, honestly. Um, you can try it. You did? No. Okay. Can you try a space elevator? I cannot try a space elevator uh, because... Those won't work in the current build, unfortunately. All right, we got to check on Valentina here and get rid of these. And this one. There we go. I know there's an old video where somebody made it's not really a space elevator. It's just a really ridiculous chain of um, like decouplers, I think. Like start really high up. In SFS, you can build one at work. I I believe you. I know how that is. How what is? Next here. Who? Oh, who that is? Who is that? Oh, okay. I guess we're coming in a little bit different than I was hoping. Let's go ahead and get these guys separated, like so. Racked antenna. We can just go ahead and delete that. That's who built the decoupler stack. Yes! 
Uh, people do some pretty wacky things taking advantage of the physics engine in the game. I try to avoid that. I try to keep it very semi-realistic. So if I don't make something a certain way, it's probably because I'm trying to maintain a, a certain style that I think matches what the developers intended. Not, I'm not trying to break the game, you know? Might have to increase the ablator in these. Yeah, it's probably fine. Mostly have to build it in space, though, because I don't want to waste refueling fuel for my rockets to reach the moon. Yes. Alright. Hey, there's the moon. Look at that. Uh, in space refueling and in space construction is definitely, well, in space construction specifically is something I'm really looking forward to in KSP2. So that's, uh, that's one of the reasons I'm trying to kind of do this campaign. I want to make sure I see everything KSP1 has before KSP2 comes out, which at this rate, who knows when that's going to be, you know? But, um, non carbon based construction is going to be huge and it's going to be fun, I think. As for refueling, uh, the first version was just too heavy to have a bunch of fuel on the space elevator. Yeah, I feel like you want your space elevator to be as light as possible. Or, I don't know how the physics work with regards to that, but in, in real life, a, a space elevator would be governed more by tension than by compression, so that's like a whole different can of worms you gotta worry about physics-wise. Alright, so we've got Calfort. Oh, so it wasn't even Valentina. What's Valentina doing? I thought Valentina was on a mission, but I guess it was these guys. Our new pilot, Mike. It won't fall back down. Yeah, that's the last thing you want is your space elevator to fall down. Can speed this up a little bit. Oh, nope, we're, we're close enough to the ground. We'll be fine. 